we have some matting so you can see the whole entire dread is is actually joined together very uncomfortable for the poor client so today we're going to cut that open and we're going to have a look at what we can do to fix it them so going forward we've got these separated now as you get to the um to the really nitty-gritty stuff here it starts to become very difficult to understand where it where it begins and where it ends i like to just run my scissors up um, and just pull a bit as you're doing it if i cut along this bit here we're going to come to a place where um the dread will release it is really important to just do one row at a time. Don't try and get in and start down here because you are not going to be able to get anywhere. Once you've pulled it up, you can kind of put your hand underneath and find where the remainder of the dread hair comes from. You are going to get a few um, a few bits that you've like chopped into here, but these can be put into the dread later on. So. We're not concerned about that. What we're concerned about is getting a decent amount of base work so we can put all of this base. Now this is quite fine. So this needs some more hair coming from here. So we go and cut into here and that's gonna make a decent sized base there for that dread. It is about not being scared. It's about going, okay, so, um, you know, you are actually recreating the dread base and it's always going to be fine as long as you make sure that you've got enough base working there. You can see his scalp's looking pretty unhappy. That's because he's had no air in there whatsoever. But as soon as we start to do this, it should free up and he'll be much more comfortable. So I just wanted to show you guys that we've separated everything now. So we now have all these separate dreads, which is really great. Now I'm going to go through and, and um, put them all together and we'll have a look at the finished product.